Hi, Anti Society. Welcome back to the Anti Social Planet. Today, we are getting into some more Twice with the Likey MV, and I'm excited, as always, to get into some more Twice music. I definitely feel like I've seen some clips from this music video specifically. Just from the thumbnail, it seems familiar. Maybe that's from the guide that I checked out. Maybe it's just because I've been following K pop for long enough that the chances of me having seen a clip of a Twice music video are pretty high. That is something that I'm like, it's, I feel like I'll probably recognize once I'm actually watching the music video what parts I've seen and if I have actually seen them. That being said, I can't think of the song off the top of my head. I've probably heard part of it at some point, but usually with some of their singles, when I hear the title, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember hearing a snippet of the chorus, but this one, there's nothing in my brain. So that does make me a little bit excited nervous i don't know but i don't know what we're getting into with the song but we're of course going to check out the song first with the lyric video and then get into the mv so let's just check out the song let's see what they got for us Ooh, a little more intense synth than i'm used to it bops though I have heard part of this song. The pit of hat too? Callback? Interesting. Okay, one, I have definitely heard the me likey part before. I feel like I can even picture some of the choreo and maybe that's part of the music video that I've seen. This upswing that they're doing with their voices is a fun bounce to it with all of this production, really fun upbeat production that's happening, really bright sounding in their delivery of the lyrics. However, the lyrics a little bit ominous, which is an interesting juxtaposition between those two things, but we've had talking about inside the small screen, I want to be the prettiest. And then talking about like the next lyric about how they're hiding what they're feeling or what they're thinking. And then this line, it was like talking about how it's so much work to have that perfect image, but at the same time, you can't give it up. That's interesting, especially with idol culture. And I think particularly with female idols, there's a very certain standard of like perfection expected in idols in general, but especially there's like an added layer of expected perfection when it comes to female idols. So interesting to have this like very like bright, poppy, bubblegum pop sounding song and like delivery to their lyrics like the way that they're singing them this really bouncy cadence that they're choosing and then the lyrical content is talking about how there's so much more going on which i feel like fits with it like this song is so quintessential k-pop bubblegum pop the sound of it and the delivery of it especially for a girl group it's like leaning directly it's right in that pocket of what that sound should be and it's like a mask for all of the stuff that's happening right all the lyrics are like hidden behind that facade and what they're actually trying to talk about which is just like literally demonstrating the lyrics, right? Like, I feel like someone like me who does not speak Korean could definitely listen to the song and just be like, oh, it's a fun bop. But then when you actually pay attention to the lyrics, you're like, hang on a second, which is very interesting. Hmm. Ugh, Jungyeon's voice. It's like the then I go on pretending. Okay, no, I have a few thoughts. Okay, one super catchy chorus, which I feel like just fits into that. Sana and Momo's voices on this, I think, are like extra good. Not just because I love their voices anyway, but because they have such a like forward, bright, pingy sound to their voices anyway. Like there is a 
like very natural like poppy sound to the way that they go about delivering their vocals and they're like emphasizing it they're elevating it just a little bit like when it comes to being cutesy i feel like sana is the master right no one does cutesy quite like sana does and she can really pull that forward for this to overemphasize it which in a lot of their songs she does little specific cutie parts in it right it's her forte right but it's elevated in a very specific way with this song, I feel like, because it is supposed to be this weird mixture of the polished facade of being an idol versus what's actually going on. And I think it's really interesting to have this like re repetition of likey, right? Already a cutesy term, as opposed to saying like. Likey has like a very cutesy like connotation to it anyway. The pit a pat a reference to one of their other songs, but also putting in that onomatopoeia of the heart also feels like it's adding into that cutesy vibe, right? Instead of talking about the complexities of their feelings, they're having this repetition and onomatopoeia instead. I also think it's interesting to see the that they're like, I like it isn't a strong enough word for what I'm feeling. I think it's interesting because it could be from their perspective as idols to say, yes, we enjoy being performers. We enjoy being idols. Like isn't strong enough to talk about how we are feeling about being these people, but we also have complexities to us, right? We are also people with feelings and experiences, and they're a very successful group. So I don't know entirely where they were at in their upswing of their career at this point, but I know that TT that came before this, that song was everywhere, right? That song is still referenced all the time now, and it has been out for a really long time. So they definitely have a ton of popularity before this point. I think that it is only exponentially grown since then, but they've always had the popularity on their side so they've had to deal with a lot of stuff with that popularity and they've referenced parts of that in their music throughout i know that there's definitely some more of that overtly in some of their newer stuff I, I know that they have more writing credits in some of their more recent stuff i think someone was telling me in the signal ep was like the first time that they started to have writing credits on their songs that may or may not be correct but i know that they do have a lot because i remember watching the guide and being like oh yeah some of them have a bunch of writing credits for their stuff, but it's mostly later on. Anyway, so that basically wanting to dig into some of those complexities of wanting to express some of the stuff that they're going through, both in terms of their popularity becoming more, them having more experience as idols and being in the music industry. They're just older too. This isn't them first starting out and just the older you get, the more complexities that you have in your life or the more you're able to analyze it and look at it and think about it and reflect on it, right? The older you get, the easier it is to really contemplate complete past experiences and current experiences and the feelings that you have attached with those. It's almost like them saying we want to bring in some more of that complexity into our music, but at the same time, we don't want to break the facade, break the persona. There's a restraint there of what you can express as a idol in terms of just idol culture and what is expected of idols. There's also rules under labels and in contracts and stuff, but also they've built a specific image at this point, right? All of their popularity that they've experienced is because they have a very specific image and aesthetic and sound that goes with that. So I know that they've deconstructed that more in their more recent stuff. They have a very different feeling to the way that they present themselves, but there definitely has to be a progression to that. Like, how do you transition into having a very different vibe with your music? How do you make your career and your art grow with you, age up with you. And I think that that is some of the growing pains that are coming through this. But at the same time, they also enjoy their career, right? It's not that they don't like doing the fun, cutesy songs. Like even now I've, I've seen some people talking about live performances that they've done and they've done like older songs and they still perform some of the like stuff early on in their career because they don't hate those songs. So it's like this complex feeling underlying all of this cutesy pop sound to the song, which is very interesting to me, especially for a lead single. I would expect this more as one of their B-sides where they, they tend to dig a little bit more into that. Interesting though. <laughs> Inter okay, the lipstick too, I think it's, it's interesting to have the talk about makeup. We had the pretty things to wear. The cheer me up makes me think of cheer up, which you've also had. So it's they have a whole song <laughs> around. Again, cheer up is really fun, upbeat. It brings people a lot of joy. Popular song. Them giving that message more externally performing these really upbeat cheerful songs for their fans and the people who 
enjoy their music to cheer them up but what does that do to them like how do you turn that on if you're like having a bad day and then you have to go on stage and bring that kind of energy right that's a complex feeling right also there was one was it there's one line where I talked about hold my breath as I like pull up the zipper and then tightening the waist again. Interesting to have those talking about beauty standards and what is expected of like women specifically in those beauty standards. Pretty pointed in that being a line. And if it is Jungyeon saying that line, I think there's an extra layer there because I know that she has some health things that have affected her weight fluctuating, which is just a normal thing of having health stuff. And if there's medication involved, that can affect you in a lot of different ways. Also, just as, as someone who also has a female body, weight just fluctuates. I feel like that's just for anyone, right? Any human being, your weight just fluctuates and it can be super, if that was like being like micromanaged, that would be like so stressful. But also if you're someone who has a menstrual cycle, your weight just fluctuates during that. Every month, your weight is just fluctuating around because that's part of how your body works, right? That's how your body goes through that process. Having all of that micromanaged would be so stressful. And I think the fact that they're just straight up saying it, it's not covert in any way is really interesting especially when they're talking about like, getting dressed up and like aren't i pretty right but they're talking about all of this added stress behind the scenes of what does it mean to get dressed up like that are you getting weighed are you not being able to fit into a costume or an outfit that you previously could have right are you having to deal with a bunch of the whole team of people micromanaging what you look like and they have observations about your hair and your skin and your teeth and your body and like all of these different things are just being like nitpicked at by the whole team of people whose job it is to make you look a very specific way and the stress of that. I've only ever gone through it backstage of doing plays. I've, I've had costumes where I cannot do anything because I can't have anything happen to this costume. I've had it where I have multiple people doing my hair while another person is doing my makeup at the same time. I've had it where people have done my makeup and I've hated it and I had to do it anyway. I've had it where I've hated my costume and I had to wear it anyway. I've had people help me into costumes because there were so there was so much going on. There's so many things that go into just doing a smaller production, let alone doing it at the scale that they are that I just I can't even imagine. But brave of them to just talk about it though. I think that one of the best things that you can do with popularity that you've been given is understand the power that you have there and the fact that someone at twice his caliber has a song where they're just like hey let's just say it is i think has a lot of power in it it's like using your influence in a good way <laughs> Oof, beautiful ad lib there too The, like pose for the camera too the like press the cute heart Ooh, interesting to say the press the the cute heart also we have to post the camera because this is from the album of twice to right already playing off of social media too of let me pose for the camera i'm all dressed up pose in a very specific curated way to make you engage with it and see that you like it right again likey right liking something on a social media post there's so many layers to this which i was i'm excited for especially for the music video i wonder what the visual will be to represent some of this because it feels very much what do you do when you have a spotlight on you but there's a very curated image to go with that they've had some of that in some of their more recent mvs was it i want to say like all the way back when I first got into them, Moonlight Sunrise or something, where there's a specific image where they have a spotlight or they're almost like there's this display feeling to the way that they're standing in one of the scenes. Anyway, they've definitely had it before where there's a very interesting curated through a screen way of looking at them. And it's interesting to see their more recent stuff still making reference to that, but then having this much earlier reference to all of that. Even if I can't sleep is an interesting line too. Ooh. Love the slowdown, but also the keep staring. Ooh. No, no, don't rap at me. Wait, we haven't heard. We haven't heard Diane, which I, I don't think we have, which is interesting given that she's also quite good at doing the cutesy voice, really emphasizing that. Have we heard Taeyong either? I know their line distribution was all over the place early on, but don't do my girls like that. Oh, 
Good line. It's like my insensitive friends are asking me to hang out, like going back to the I can't sleep, even if I can't sleep line of them working so hard that they can't make plans with people. But Taeyong's line here, if the one moment I'm crying, then I'm dancing with excitement again, which is what I was talking about before of like, how do you turn that character on when you have to go on stage? And I've had, I've performed sick where I've literally been feeling absolutely terrible and then you get in costume and you get in hair and makeup and you're like you're feeling terrible you're trying to sleep as much as you can in the green room before you have to go out and then you walk on stage and you're in character and you perform and then you get off stage and you also feel terrible <laughs> i've literally had it where i've like walked on stage done my performance gone off stage and i'm like literally laying down in the green room because I just felt awful. And you perform through it, you turn that on. I've had it where I've just gone on stage and I've acted smiley and giddy and, and you just have to do it. And that's okay for like me doing a very limited show, like a limited run again at a very much smaller scale, but like I can't even imagine doing it the way that they do it and the kinds of schedules that they have. And you perform the same thing over and over again and in quick succession, cause you're doing a bunch of promotions for it. Doing that huge switch from being very upset and melancholy that they were talking about and then you're just like, you have to be on and excited and cutesy and just bringing all that energy and doing it over and over again must be so taxing. The mental weight you have to lift every time you do that must be so difficult. Ooh, this is making me feel things. I just want to protect them. I know that they're like probably doing a lot better now, but I just feel bad for the sweeties. <laughs> I almost feel bad for like bopping at it. <laughs> oh, the ending on the heart heart too. To like something, especially since on like Instagram and stuff, when you want to like something, you like double tap. So having the heart heart is interesting. It's a bop, but I feel bad about it. I feel like I should not be bopping to it. I feel like it shouldn't be as catchy as it is. I feel like I'm gonna like the choreo and stuff too. The music video is probably gonna be a lot of fun and I'm gonna feel a little bit guilty about it because I'm like, oh no, take a rest and take care of yourself. You can talk about whatever you want. I'm here for it. I love when they dig into other stuff. And like I was saying, this feels a little bit more like the kind of stuff I, I would expect from like a B-side from them at this point point in their career because they have talked about some other more in-depth things in the b-sides of their music i would not have expected it from a single like if you're going to talk about this double kind of life between the person that you are conveying publicly as an idol with what you're actually going through and some of the more complexities of just being a person which means that you're going through other stuff and your moods are going to fluctuate your health is going to fluctuate and you just have to manage that whilst also trying to have this perfected persona for being an idol i think that it needs to be a single like this. I think it needs to be a really upbeat, very quintessential K-pop lollipop pop song that's just like oozing with that super catchy onomatopoeia easy to sing along hook and the choreo is probably also very in that pocket of what is expected of like a k-pop girl group cutesy catchy probably quite easy for other people to follow along I i'm assuming it's probably some like really bright colors in the music video too you have to really layer on all of those things very stereotypical parts of being a, a girl group in k-pop and then and have these lyrics that just do not pull punches and i think that's one of the things that i really like is that even though the lyrical content is talking about these like darker subjects and like the struggles there it's not vague i don't have to deconstruct that they're talking about diet culture and going through like being sad and then having to go on stage. I don't have to go through the fact that they're struggling by the fact that they can't meet up with friends and other people, that they're struggling with the fact that they do want to look pretty in these photos, in this small screen, and they want to have that image, but at the same time, they're going through some other stuff and they're tired of feeling like on display and they want you to look closer and actually see what's going on with them. I don't have to deconstruct that from vague lyrical content. 
they're saying it's overt, right? So it's a really interesting juxtaposition between those two elements. And I think that the music video is just going to really elevate that. I think that's going to have some really interesting things that just really pinpoint what is expected of a K-pop music video, hopefully subverting it maybe a little bit. I don't know, but I'm excited now. I'm, I just I feel a little bit bad by liking it so much. I just realized how long I've been recording. You know, it's bad. Okay, but you can always tell when I've really gotten into a group, I'm like fully going down the rabbit hole or something when I can react to a single and it's an hour's worth of filming. It's probably fine. Okay, we're in a school. That seems very K-pop. We have the alien sticker. That makes me think of Signal. Lots of cutesy imagery. <laughs> Them being adorable, hanging out. Do not feed the geese. I've definitely seen that choreo before. The bright colors. I also think it's interesting that we have a handheld camera, almost like vlogging, where it's, again, even though they're sharing moments of vlogs and more behind the scenes, more candid moments, they're still performing, right? Every vlog is still a performance through the lens of them being a member of the group twice, right? So I think it's really interesting to have those clips in there too, where it's supposed to be a more personal, candid way of showing their lives, but there's still a filter there. I hope this doesn't break my heart a little bit. Ooh, nice use of a, like, white screen transition. Again, leading into the cutesy side. Okay, again, bright colors, very cutesy in the choreo too. I also think that they have the heart and they point down to the bottom right, which is usually where like the heart button is, the like button is on posts. And there's all these moments of through cameras, like whether or not we're, sh we're they're showing like the like camcorder and like going through to seeing like the choreo that way or the handheld, like again, all this filtered through this lens of like social media and posting and like what they look like on a screen as opposed to what they're actually going through. Lots of cutesy imagery and like just the way that they're styled and even putting like the pigtails in Momo's hair, like it feels like a candid moment of them like playing around, but it is very much to be like very deliberately cutesy and to be seen in a very like, specific way. It's very interesting. Also super catchy. The little like likey choreo is very like cute, but also like easy to follow again for lots of people to be able to dance along and to do social media challenges and things like that. So there's, it's like this weird thing of like, it feels meta. It feels like they're breaking the fourth wall of really deconstructing what it means to be like to make a song that you're like, I know that this song is going to be perceived in a very specific way. It is going to be promoted in a very specific way, which I feel like already I'm like, I get that as someone who has followed the music industry for a long time, has also been into K-pop for a while now that I can see through some of that, the tactics a little bit better than definitely like early on. But this feels like a very on the nose of them like, hey, feel like, hey, just so you know, we're doing this on purpose. And it's like, it's wild because I'm like bopping along and I'm like, oh wait, yeah, no, this is, <laughs> this is about something else. <laughs> Ooh, that even that switch from like moments where they have a straight face and they're smiling again. Ooh. 
Oh my gosh, that was a bunch of their choreo. That's cute though. No, they played me again. Momo just did a bunch of their choreo from their different choreo, like the cutesy part, right? Of Signal and we have TT and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, that's cute. And then I was like, no, that's the point. That's the point. It's supposed to, for me to just be like, oh, cute. And then move on with my life. That wasn't them trying to talk about how there's, it's all filtered and it's all a mask. And I feel like I'm going to have an existential crisis about this song because I like it, but I feel like I shouldn't like it, which is the whole point. Good God. <laughs> Even the flash of like the camera. Oh. Interesting to have the very like the darker settings now and the smiles aren't there anymore like it's ma'am <laughs> like even that part okay i was talking about how they momo i'm gonna need you to calm down okay i'm gonna need momo to not do the thing where she's a fantastic dancer i feel like that's what's gonna happen because i know there's a musical part after this hang on but even this scene in the like subway or whatever very overtly cutesy acting right from dahyun and taehyung and i'm like this is cute but also i understand why we're like overly doing it and then even having dahyun doing like the dab is like trendy right doing like a trendy thing for when this came out which happens all the time there are so many choreos in k-pop where they put in specifically trendy dances or gestures or references or whatever and it dates them immediately but in the moment of when the song came out it was very much on trend and it shows the lack of seeing longevity in certain things because now that choreo doesn't make any sense unless you understand what a dab is or flossing Remember, there, there's choreo in k-pop that has flossing in it and i'm like wow no one does flossing anymore so if you watch it now you're like oh this is from a very specific time and because of that song has lost some of the impact that it had and i think that some people will look at that roll their eyes and not take it as seriously because it has this very on-trend reference but at the time that it came out everyone was like yeah sure put that in but because of that it's there's a, a expiration date to that and it, it's not considered a lot in k-pop that there should be like longevity to a song or a piece of choreo or performance because everyone's already moved on to the next thing in the next day, the next hour, right? I think that people move on so quickly in how fast the music industry works, let alone K-pop, that they don't think about those things. It doesn't matter as much because it just needs to be on trend in the moment. And I think it's just really interesting to put that in, to being like doing things just because it's trendy instead of because you want to or because there's something creative in that. It's just fascinating. I, I feel like I'm going to have an existential crisis a little bit with this one because I'm just like, oh no, I know it's okay for me to like it. I understand. They made it because they wanted me to enjoy it. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to feed into anything. <laughs> Momo, I get it, you're a dancer. But ma'am, ma'am. I get that that's the point too. I know what you're doing. Wait, is... Is Jungyeon wearing the dress that was in the window from before? Interesting. I feel like there's so many layers to that scene. I don't know how to feel about it. I'm not to interrupt everything that they're doing. But the scene where she was... That dress that she was looking at. Interesting that we're wearing it now. When she was talking about there's so many pretty things to wear, but there's also a lot of... I don't know. I was gonna say that you look beautiful, but I feel bad every time I say something like that. I'm like, y'all are cute. You look really good. You sound great. Dance in the choreo. But I feel bad every time. Because I get that's the point. <laughs> Like, that move is so, like, cutesy and on purpose. Ooh, right into the, like, palm of your hand. So interesting. I feel conflicted because I love the song. I think it's 
cute to the point. I think the choreo is really catchy, which again is the point. It just, it's so like meta and I feel like there's so many other things. I love the part where a bunch of it is in this really lit sunshine, bright colored settings. And then we had in the like bridge where it was at nighttime, much darker coloring, these points of light and they weren't smiling in the same way anymore. Like these very overt performance smiles showing that darkness in comparison to the light and really digging into the fact that they have other things going on behind those smiles. Fascinating. I feel like I don't know what to do with the song because I know it's okay for me to like it. I know that it's all right, that I find it catchy and cute and that they look great in the video and I love the choreo and all of that. I like, I know that's fine, but at the same time, I'm like, that's like the point. You made it that way. And you, I know that they did that with all of them. They do that with every single music video that they do, but it's been overtly pointed out to me and now I feel a little bit judged. <laughs> okay, not entirely on topic of us talking about the song, but I just, I was briefly looking at the comments of the MV and someone said something about part of it being filmed in Vancouver, which is very far away from where I live, but it is still in the same country. So if that is true, that might be the closest I ever get to anything with twice because Canada, people don't come here, which is fine, but it does break my heart a little bit. I feel a little bit of a crisis, okay? Because what do you mean that you're going to point out all of the meta of the music industry and like K-pop specifically and like girl groups and make a really catchy song that like fits into all of that? Because I like legitimately like cutesy songs and look amazing in it, but then also have commentary about like how you have all this pressure and anxiety around looking well. And there's, and I just, I feel bad every time I'm like, hey, that's cute. Cause I'm like, that's the point, right? Like when Momo had that part where she went through all of the different choreo of specific cutesy parts, iconic parts in their choreo. And I'm like, no, that's the point is that I'm like, oh, cute. And then I'm like, no, wait, which I think is great. I think that is amazing. That is what they decided to do with the song. I think that the MV really leaned in to all of the ideas that they had lyrically in that song. And hit on a lot of the things that happen in k-pop music videos and like other music videos that they've had there was even i feel like some parallels with the cheer up mv because we had it in like the like gym the gymnasium again which is also like where the cheer up was as well and being like the school we've had that with like ua we also had a little bit in signal so there's like i feel like there's like specific references to other things that they've done in their music videos not just in terms of bringing the choreo for but also in like the settings that they're choosing i think it's very interesting that they had certain moments where they would have a bit more of a flat facial expression and then it would hard cut to another one where they have these big smiles and they're really playing up for the camera and being like k-pop idols right there's so many different things that i feel like i could pull apart from this music video watching it again and connecting it more with the lyrics i feel like I was glancing at the lyrics while I was going through, obviously, to just keep track of where I was in the song and be able to reference that a little bit to what was going on visually. But I feel like being able to really focus in on that a little bit more, obviously, a first reaction, there's only so much that I'm going to be able to take away. But I feel like there would be more things there and more references, even just in the background. I'm sure that there were some references to things and stuff going on in the backgrounds that I didn't focus in on. I know that there was one part where there were like three of them dancing in the middle and then there were like sets of two on the sides that were like doing little cute interactions together. Yeah, I'm just like, I, I feel a little bit of a crisis with this song because I legitimately like it and enjoy listening to it and it bops, but I feel like a little bit, I feel like a little bit called out with that. And I understand that's part of the story is they're like, yeah, we also have complex feelings about it, right? That's part of it too, where they're talking about like, isn't it a strong enough word? And even them saying me likey, obviously going, leaning into some of the like, cutesiness and the repetition of pop music to have that like, catchy hook or whatever but also to be like yeah we also we we enjoy being performers we enjoy being twice we like being idols but at the same time there's a lot of other stuff that comes along with that package right so i think that it's a very similar thing of fans yes we can enjoy music but at the same time we have to understand that these are like companies that are curating images and specific like group aesthetics and the songs are picked very specifically and the choreo is made so that it is both like a performance but there are certain parts like in the chorus that are supposed to be simpler so that will make videos doing the dance because that'll promote the song more and the group more and the catchy choruses and stuff is so that like we can make stuff related to that to promote the group and yeah we're supposed to think that they look beautiful and there's all these things that are like deliberately there so that we engage with it in a very specific way and consume the things that they are making i feel a little bit like okay yeah sure I like this and I enjoy it and I want to see what other stuff they have in terms of dance practices and performances and stuff. But at the same time, I feel like there's a little bit of, of guilt along with that because also be like a conscious consumer of stuff because at the end of the day, they are also all human beings who have complex feelings and health and mental health and are going through a lot being in the spotlight and 
also need breaks and stuff. And I know that some of the members have taken breaks from doing promotions and have needed to to take that time for themselves. So it's complicated, isn't it? But I, I think that's like the point of the song is that there is this weird, complicated relationship with being a performer and being an idol and being in the public eye and wanting to both be that curated image because one, there's like some kind of protection with separating yourself as like a performer from like your own personal things. There's also wanting to bring that happiness to other people, wanting to be comfort for other people and have them find that in the things that you're making and I think also I've, I've talked about before with me making videos sometimes it's like there's something going on in my life and it's a bit of a relief to just make a video and escape into some of the persona of being a person who makes videos right there's a limit to what I share and express through my videos and sometimes that is nice it is nice to take a break from the stuff going on in my life and make a video and get to just enjoy music and turn off the part of my brain that has to deal with what's going on in my life so like it's complicated y'all <laughs> just like I don't even know how to feel after after that but I hope you enjoyed listening to that along with me let me know your comments and stuff down below of your perspective on it and you can click this playlist to go into my praise reactions or you can subscribe to this next time I post a toys reaction I will see you in the next video bye